Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and in this case another video regarding a, a pretty a common question that I get in terms of gun barrel length, what is better suited, should I get a, a 4 inch one, 6 inch, 2 inches, compact, fairly common question, I've done plenty of videos before but you know new people in the channel and as time goes by the question comes back again. Now recently I had a question in one of the videos that I did regarding the Manu Ron revolvers, I have the 4 inch version and the 5 and a 3 quarter inch version of this same revolver and someone was asking which one is better and I've also received questions pretty much on that same line uh, regarding barrel length or compact or subcompact guns before I go on with the video though be, guys before I forget uh, a couple things first subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell button yes of course it does help me with the channel but especially for my channel, if you don't do that, you're never gonna be getting any uh, notifications of future videos, especially because most of my videos are either demonetized or blacklisted or age restricted, like the last one I did, which there's really no reason for doing that because most of those clips are already on YouTube, but not restricted. Well, for my channel, YouTube, thank you YouTube, always giving me a hard time, they do put these restrictions and these limitations. So if you're not subscribed and and if you haven't hit that notification bell button, you're gonna be missing. And you know what? You're probably gonna be missing on the more important videos that YouTube probably doesn't want you to watch. So make sure you do that. Besides that, if you're interested in this sort of thing, in terms of street survival, self-defense, firearms, of course, the best thing, get an actual defensive shooting class with a qualified instructor that has a good rep in the community. Not always easy to find, but that is the best thing you can do. If not, with street survival skills, my book I do try to um, pass along some of the lessons and things I've learned over the years and also things I've learned in different classes and practical stuff I've learned just through life so that is pretty much what street Sur uh, survival skills is about you'll have the link there below in case you're interested in that and of course my other books there as well in terms of economic collapse my first one and bugging out and relocating one final thing before I go on with the video a um, completely different topic if you're interested in video games, that sort of thing, I leave my link there below for Star Citizen Free Fly Week. This is pretty much uh, for a couple more days until the 25th. You can play Star Citizen completely free, nothing. You just follow the link, download, and start playing until the 25th. It is a great opportunity to check it out and see if you like it. And if you do like it, they are doing a 30% discount this week. And yeah, it's a fairly nice discount if you're considering buying it and start playing it. And I want to thank uh, Akernonging and Deadmeat99. Nice name, guys. So those two guys are the latest subscribers that have used the referral code from my own channel. So if you want to check that out and you get like a pretty cool armor and sniper rifle only for this week because of free fly week. Anyway, all of that in the link there below. Okay, let's get to this. Typical question, okay, how much barrel length, what makes sense or not? Um, in regarding the question that this guy was asking, the MR73, uh, which one would I prefer, four inch barrel, which is this one, or the other one that I have, which is the five and, a, and three quarter inch barrel? I prefer the sport version, which is a longer barrel. Why? Well, first of all, because longer barrel means it's gonna be easier to shoot accurately, and it has more velocity because of the longer barrel, more powder burning until it, you know, until it leaves the barrel, and also because specifically in this model of gun it is more iconic the sport model is the one that GIGN used the most you do see a few pictures of them using the shorter one but I think that the sport is a more iconic especially because of uh, its involvement in the the hijacking of the Air France Air France plane where the point man was using um, Manuron MR73 a sport model with a longer barrel and he killed like two terrorists in in the cabin one of 
the most successful anti-terrorist operations uh, where they, they saved everyone that was alive in the plane at the time and killed all the terrorists, which is, you know, nice bonus there. Um, in the case of the Python, also very iconic with that six inch barrel. You will see this in general, that the longer barrel is a little bit more uh, appreciated or more iconic. You know, Hollywood has a part here because this is more visible and maybe more impressive, you know, for film. But there's also a practical side to this, which is longer barrels are simply easier to shoot better and more accurately. And of course, some smart is gonna be da -da 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 in the comments, you, you know nothing. I have a 0 0.2 inch barrel that I shoot at 500 yards in two inch groups. Sure, yeah, I mean, yes, there's of course people like that. And there's honestly very good shooters that shoot very well with pretty much any kind of gun, even with very short barrels. And every once in a while, I have come across a short in barrel. For example, I, I have a, a cult, a detective model, one of the older ones, that thing is a, you know, it's a sewing machine. Even though it has a two inch barrel, that little 38, very accurate gun. Now, I'll also say this, it also requires a little bit more of calming down, maybe shooting it in single action. If you do all of that, it's surprisingly accurate. But general rule of thumb, the longer the barrel, the easier it's gonna be of shooting accurately, most of all because of this sight radius. Shorter sight radius, it means means bigger groups. You know, longer side radios, your groups are going to be getting smaller, even though you can shoot super accurately with a four inch gun or a three inch gun. But most cases, and I, and I mean like a, for the great majority of people, longer side radius going to be shooting uh, more accurately. And besides that, the bigger gun is also going to be easier to control. This is kind of counterintuitive and usually you see like, like the old Lady Smith revolver. You know, the old Lady Smith revolver is just like a, like a tiny little girly gun. A girly gun should be heavy because girls usually have less strength than men. And the heavier gun means it's easier to control. Someone one was this happened in my, in my Spanish channel where someone was, was bitching and complaining because I said that my wife, who is not a gun person, she doesn't like guns. She's not interested in this and she sees these things just as, as tools and kind of ugly tools and she divides them in shiny and black. That's her category of guns. But she will shoot this 357 Magnum revolver pretty well, decently enough for her, uh, for, for her intended uh, purposes. It does does the job. Now, is this bad because it's big and heavy? No, it's, act it's actually the opposite. The heavier the gun, the easier it's gonna be to control for someone that hasn't got a lot of physical strength. And especially with longer barrels, what ends up happening is that the more mass you add to it, specifically in an area that is quite convenient. Before anyone freaks out, no, these are snap caps. No, the gun is not loaded. Um, but the longer barrel means you have more weight exactly what's gonna be compensating that recoil and that muzzle flip. It's not going to be flipping as much because of the longer barrel puts that weight specifically where it works in your advantage. It's actually, and some people uh, that you know, that are, you know, uh, uh, precision shooters, they know this, that some guns actually come with the option of adding weight on purpose to the barrel so as to make it heavier. This is going to be doing the same thing. The longer barrel is going to be compensating and you're going to be shooting it faster more accurately and with less recoil than the smaller gun. Now, uh, same thing goes with in terms of, of pistols, you know, uh, semi-automatics, uh, people sometimes like the, the, the subcompact or the compact. You know what? Whatever uh, works for you, in general, the advice is full-size guns are generally better. They're easier to shoot accurately. You have more real estate, so as to get hold of it. If you take it to a class, which I definitely recommend you do, you'll notice this yourself. You're gonna be learning that, man, yeah, I do shoot faster, more accurately with the full-size gun. Some people will, uh, maybe with a Glock 19, they do still very well. It's, some people will say, I shoot uh, almost just as well. I I kind of, okay, um, I mean, th that may well be the case. Maybe you'll just like it better now that you shoot better with a shorter barrel. Uh, I mean, sh you could shoot maybe as good as you do with a 17, uh, but the idea that you're gonna be better at it because you have less 
site radius, it's kind of not a thing. <laughs> but if it works for you, that's fantastic. Now it gets to a point where it's just downright stupid. And this is because of marketing. The idea here is to sell more guns and come up with new things as to keep the ball rolling. Now, this doesn't mean that you should get fall, fall for all of that marketing crap. Um, the idea that you're going to be going with a snub nose, super compact, six round, whatever. I mean, yes, it's going to be comfortable. It's not supposed to be comfortable in your pocket. It's supposed to be something that allows you to kill people that want you dead. That's the intended user of a firearm. You know, if a defensive firearm is stop someone that has decided to end your life and the life of your loved ones. Not something, like, oh, this is so comfortable in my pocket. God, I can carry this all day long. It's something that you have to find a balance into having enough tool to get the job done and you know something that yes I can still carry it maybe the Python with a six inch barrel it's not realistic as an everyday carry gun can you carry a Glock 17 all day long absolutely can you carry a Glock 19 all day long of course you can I mean you can carry the Glock 17 is you know it's perfectly uh, adequate for it with a proper holster and belt but sometimes people go with a smaller gun there are exceptions there are guns that are a little bit more compact for example the HKP7 which is a pretty compact gun even though quite heavy because it's all steel forged steel actually and in spite of being compact it is extremely accurate and you have a surprisingly good sight radius in spite of it because of how this is designed it makes the most of the slide real stage as we have the maximum sight radius uh, with uh, the gun you have and besides that the trigger is you know it's a very peculiar design but it's extremely accurate I mean this gun in my hands and in the hands of most people will be more accurate than you Glock 17 for advanced shooters for medium shooters for average shooters even average shooters will see that they shoot this more accurately than the a Glock 17 it's just the way it is with the mechanical um, characteristics of this kind of gun just like with a six inch barrel a 357 Magnum most people will see yeah I shoot it better Better than a two-inch snobby. Uh, you know, I just do. That's simply the way it works. Also, notice this: with a full-size gun, you can look at getting this kind of thing. You you'll get the the. Um the, the, the things you, you can uh, uh, consider. Also, the magazines are going to be full size as well. You you will have more capacity. You will have more options in terms of the market, what's available. Okay. So, and I did the same video for my Spanish channel. And in my Spanish channel, I'm addressing people that have a different reality from you guys. And by you guys, I mean folks in the United States or people in in parts of the world that don't live a kind of violence daily that is. Uh, just uh, taking for granted in places like South America and Argentina, where I come from. You know, in, in, in places like Argentina, three, four armed attackers, pretty well armed and very well trained, or maybe even uh, cops doing uh, a side gig, it wouldn't be the first time. It actually, it's actually unfortunately very common. But even, even the average criminal in South America, it's gonna be a lot more prepared, a lot more motivated. It's gonna be as well armed as any criminal in the United States and it's probably gonna be a bunch of them it's probably gonna be three or four guys all of them with guns maybe with walkie-talkies communicating and that is not a movie thing that is every fucking day in Argentina unfortunately so you know it's very unfortunate but that's the reality of self-defense in a place like that so having your subcompact five shot whatever you're kind of going with a tool that is not adequate for that kind of threat. So if you're living in an extremely safe part of the world and you feel comfortable with your Derringer, go be happy with your Derringer. You live in Argentina and you're asking me for advice regarding what kind of gun you, you should have for self-defense, for home defense, then really, I mean, maybe even, uh, not even a revolver, maybe, the, I mean, maybe not. With absolute certainty, I'm gonna be advising you, get yourself a Glock 17, learn how to shoot it properly, be good at it and practice with somewhat frequency. Either a Glock is a Glock 9 mm Glock 40, Glock 357 Magnum, but uh, a gun that has full capacity and a gun that you can take to classes and learn to shoot as effectively as possible because you're going to be going against three or four armed guys. And you may be thinking, oh, that's fantasy. No, I have actually done video reviews of people that you know, not only survive, but they actually end up winning the fight because they are motivated, they have the firearm that 
that is adequate for the test and they have the training test to do so and a little bit of luck as well now if you are the untrained guy with a, a five shot snubby revolver you're not gonna be winning a gunfight against three or four guys in in your garage like the guy that I showed a video of a, a while back that guy had a, a, I think a Glock 19 or a Glock 17 whatever it is but he had the gun the training he was a, a I think a, a detective or a, or a maybe a, like, like a, a police officer in, 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 his, in, in his town. And besides that, he took training actually with my same instructor that I had in, in Argentina. So this is a very well-trained guy with the adequate firearm and the opportunity to, to use that properly. And that fight, he ends up winning it, okay? But the more limitations you, you put on yourself, the, the less uh, chance of, of that ended up in your favor you have. Folks, that's gonna be all for now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Interested in the stuff, you have the books there below on Amazon. Take care, see you on the next video.